In this video, we're going to learn how to listen to jazz. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Most of my tutorials focus on helping jazz pianists improve their skill. But in this video, we're just going to listen to jazz and we're going to try to improve your listening skills and your ears. I've queued up one of my own compositions called the Netster. It's a jazz quartet recording. What I'm gonna do is play a little bit of the introduction and I want you to listen for two things right off the bat. Number one, what feel is it? What is the time signature? And that means whether it's three, four, 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 six, eight time. I'll tell you what it is afterward. And if you don't really understand the term, I'll explain it a little bit more. And the second thing I want you to listen for is how many different instruments do you hear and what are they? Let's listen to it. Okay, that's the introduction. We're gonna go on a little bit more and introduce more instruments, but right now it is a jazz quartet and how many instruments did you pick out? And obviously I think for most people, one of the main instruments that you can hear is the drums. Now the drummer is responsible for keeping good time. And that's a really important term when you're talking about jazz musicians. Can the person keep good time? And did you listen for the time signature? It was actually 4-4 four, four time, meaning four beats to the bar, with the accent being on two and four. Let's listen to it again and we'll count together 4-4 four, four time. One, two, three, four. And that's what you really need to do as a listener. First, just determine what's the feel and the time of the tune. In this case, 4-4 four, four time. Now, you probably heard the drummer play different things with his sticks. We're gonna talk about the main ones. The first one that you probably hear is this one here. It's called a ride cymbal. It's basically when the drummer takes his stick and does this. Da, 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 da. And it sounds like this. If we play it on the keyboard. It's playing like a quarter note and then two eighth notes. Swing style. And I think that's an important term when you're talking about the feel. Is it swing or straight ahead time? Swing means the eighth notes are divided differently. Straight eighths is this. Where swing is this. Hear the difference? And that's, again, that's an important part of jazz. It's something that actually doesn't appear in any other music. And jazz is the music that originated that. The next thing that the drummer does is he plays what's called a snare drum. Now, a snare drum can be hit many different ways. You can smack it with a stick, it sounds like this. Or you can play a rim shot that sounds like this. And then there's other things that you can do with brushes and many different sounds that you can make. But those are the two main ones. Then there's the bass drum. That kind of sounds like this. I don't really have a jazz version of a bass drum sampled, but basically it's just this low thing that you hit with your foot. And then next most important thing is what we call the hi-hat. Now the hi-hat you play with your left foot. The bass drum you play with your right foot. Let's look for a hi-hat sound. I think this is it. Anyway, so when he hits it with his left foot, he's playing on two and four. One, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's go back and listen to the music now and see if we can hear all the different things that the drummer is doing. You can hear him hit the snare drum every now and then. The next person in the rhythm section that holds down the time is the bass player. Let's put a bass player in the picture. We'll make him a little bit smaller. And he stands over near the drums. They kind of want to be together because they listen to each other and feed off each other. All right, so the bass is basically playing the lowest note in the band and it kind of anchors everything. 
What I'm going to do is play a little bit of a bass line that the bass player might play in this tune. Now that's very different than something you might have heard of called a walking bass. And the reason why he's playing that is because it's kind of half time. He's playing a note every two beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Get the idea. If he were walking a bass, he'd play something like a scale on every beat of the bar. probably heard a bass player in a jazz band do that before. Let's go back and listen to the tune a little bit more and listen to the bass and drums playing together. Now, the next instrument that we want to pay attention to is one of the most important instruments at least in my view, and that is the piano. Also part of the rhythm section, the piano is on the left of the drums facing the band, and the bass player would be on the right of the drums. Now, sometimes the bass player fits in the middle between these two, so you can put the bass player over here. That's kind of the way I like to do it, but a lot of other bands like to put the bass player on the right to kind of even out the look of the stage. Of course, you all know what a piano sounds like. This isn't a real piano, of course. This is a keyboard. But let me give you an example of what I might be playing. That's called comping. You're playing along with the other instruments to kind of make the whole thing sound great. But I'll also play some melodic fills, not just those pads. Let's go back and listen to the tune now and hear all of the different things that I'm doing at the beginning of this tune. Hear that? I'm playing a little bit higher. Really high there. High on the keyboard. And as I mentioned before, those three instruments make up what we call the rhythm section. And while the piano and the bass player are playing notes, they're basically harmonic instruments, they're also keeping time with rhythm. You'll notice that when I was playing the pads, they're very rhythmic. Okay, the last instrument that I want you to listen to comes in after the introduction, and that is, in this case, a saxophone player. Now, in a jazz quartet, Saxophone is pretty common, but you can also have a vibraphone player, you could have a trumpet player, or really any other reed instrument or horn that you can think of. In this case, it's a tenor saxophone. But what I want you to do this time is listen right through to the end of the introduction to where the saxophone comes in. There it is. Try to discern the different sounds that all four instruments are making together. First, listen to the drums. Hear the bass. Hear the piano. Easy to hear the saxophone because that's the instrument out front. So what's about to happen in this tune now? Well, I know the tune because I wrote it. And what's going to happen is we're going to play what's called a bridge. So, so far, it's been pretty easy to listen to 
drummers keeping time, bass players keeping time, piano players making some fills, and the saxophone is playing some melody. What's going to happen now is all the instruments converge to play some type of rhythm. Now, in this particular case, it's the bridge. It's the space between the chorus and another chorus. Let's listen to it now. Hear all the instruments kind of hitting the same beats at the same time. Now here's a saxophone fill. Back to the chorus. We'll get back to the tune when the solos are finished. So try to remember that when you're listening to jazz, it's mostly an improvisational music or improv for short. So while we're using a chart and we're learning that chart together and playing it together, there's still a lot of improvising going on. We're choosing what we play in order to match the other instruments. When you get to the solo section, that's where instruments, typically melodic instruments like the saxophone, the piano, and even the bass can take what they call a solo. Let's listen to the first part of the saxophone solo. And keep in mind that the rhythm section is still going, filling in the spaces and helping the saxophone player make his solo sound better. Let's listen to all three of those together. Hear the sax bending the notes. And of course, the more you listen to jazz, the easier it becomes. Trying to discern in between the different instruments and the time and the feel, that's just the beginning stages. The next things you wanna start listening for is during the solo, what are the harmonic complexities? How are the instruments following each other? How does the piano fill in when the saxophone player is not playing? And is the harmony more dissonant, more modern than sort of like a older swing style type of harmony. Next, you might want to start identifying what we call chord progressions. In this particular case, a chord progression would be D minor to G7. Trying to hear that with your ears, trying to discern whether the first chord is minor and the next chord is a dominant chord. Of course, that's pretty much how musicians like to listen to music, is to discern all the complexities in the harmony. Now, there's a lot of other things that you need to do to become a better jazz listener, but I think that's enough for now. If you have any questions or you want to point out something that I might have missed, please do that in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And while the music plays us out of this video, I'd like to remind you that if you make a comment or give the video a thumbs up, it really helps us here at the channel reach more listeners. And also, if you want to subscribe, we'd absolutely love to have you. Please do that. And if you're already a piano player and you're just getting into jazz, this is probably a good video for you. But if you want to go a little more advanced, I have a series of beginner piano lessons for people who already play the piano. Like if you've got like a grade eight, grade 10 level conservatory piano, this would be a good series for you to watch. The first video in that 10 part series, it's absolutely free by the way, that first video is right here.